Hello friends, my name is Marshall Thomas. I have recently made the case that American citizens, political dissidents and whistleblowers mostly, are being targeted, tortured, and slowly murdered with classified military technology. Microwave anti-personnel weapons being used on several thousand individuals in the United States and other people around the world in different countries. This is difficult if not impossible to prove without actually stealing classified documentation about these classified programs from the intelligence community itself. What I am postulating here is that a group within the intelligence communities have hijacked these organizations and are utilizing public power in an arbitrary and perhaps systematic way. Now the case I have put forth, if it is impossible to prove with the classified documents themselves that detail this program, what I have done is submit the facts, historical and present day facts, that make any reasonable person believe that there is a high degree of probability that these operations are taking place. What I am calling for is a more in-depth investigation into these charges. What I am proving, the facts I am citing and recording here, are the historical facts of human experimentation programs by our government multiple times in the past half century. Microwave weapons experiments on human beings in the laboratory in other countries. Microwave weapons being used to subdue internal dissidents and to attack protesters. These I have documented. The fact that these microwave weapons, anti-personnel devices, and related devices are in effect for sale. Some of these weapons, very similar to them, that operate on the same principles, are being sold by corporations to the general public and to the United States military in the open. I cite the careers of dozens of scientists, their patents and their scientific papers that publicly explain their breakthroughs and the potentialities of these weapon systems and how they have been potentially misused in this instance. Military doctrine papers over the last 40 years that explain exactly how to use these types of weapons against individual soldiers as well as civilians. I have submitted several names as persons of interest within the intelligence community who have been active in related activities. I have also cited hundreds of credible witnesses, people who are basically living in different parts of the United States who have never met each other and who are telling the same story, that they are under attack from anti-personnel microwave weapons. Also as evidence, I cite the historical pattern of illegal behavior by our intelligence communities that include overthrowing elected foreign governments, smuggling drugs, weapons, and engaging in large-scale bank frauds, as well as other illegal activities over the past 60 years. And finally, I cite the creation of cults and other closed systems by members of the intelligence community to use as a smokescreen as well as the creation of the concept of remote viewing. Remote viewing and these fake religions are being used as a springboard and as a smokescreen, a psychological warfare operation to cover up these illegal activities. The US government has funded several different human experimentation programs beginning at the turn of the century with eugenics but also the human radiation experiments that began after World War II and Project MKUltra 
then also began after World War II. These are three examples of U.S. government paid for human experimentation programs. The Tuskegee Syphilis Experiments were the most well known U.S. government human experimentation program. This encompassed 300 African American males living in the South who were studied from the 1930s to the 1970s in order to understand the disease progression of syphilis. These men suffered a slow and horrible death, going blind and eventually insane, and also needlessly infecting many other human beings. It was not until 40 years after this program had begun that a single medical professional publicly lodged a complaint. In the end, this program paid off the victims. However, no one in power and no institution was ever punished. The human radiation experiments involved several thousand people. Exactly how many will never be known. These were American citizens who were in hospitals for illnesses or perhaps even traffic accidents. They were injected with plutonium or many others were subjected to harmful or deadly levels of radiation over their entire bodies. Other people, such as pregnant women, were given radioactive isotopic cocktails to drink. These victims numbered in thousands. American military personnel were needlessly exposed to harmful and even deadly levels of radioactive fallout during the nuclear tests that ran until the early 1960s. Approximately 200,000 American soldiers were exposed to harmful and even deadly levels of radiation for no good reason. During the human radiation experiments, Nazi paperclip scientists were smuggled into the United States and some of these men participated in these experiments. Dr. Hubertus Strughold, a Nazi paperclip scientist in working at San Antonio for the Air Force, recruited Dr. Herbert Gerstner, a Nazi scientist who had used human beings in the concentration camps to study the exact cause of death in cases of electrocution, as well as to study what happens when people lose their hearing due to heavy shelling in combat. Dr. Gerstner experimented upon these Jewish prisoners and Allied prisoners of war, and when the experiments were over, the human beings were shot and their bodies were burned. Dr. Gerstner was brought to the United States where he participated with a Dr. Sanger and together they irradiated over several dozen years approximately a thousand American citizens to study the effects of radiation on the body and for no other therapeutic reason. Elmer Allen was a train porter. He injured his knee and went to a San Francisco hospital in 1947. His left leg was injected with plutonium. The next day it was amputated. Elmer was debilitated and in pain for the rest of his natural life, some 45 years in fact. During the 1970s when the medical community began secretly collecting the bodies of the people that they had injected with plutonium, to their amazement they discovered that some of these people were still alive including Elmer Allen. They enticed Mr. Allen and his wife to come to Chicago where they collected his urine and feces and did extensive testing to further their studies on the effects of radiation on the human body. It was only after Mr. Allen's death that his family discovered that he had been used for 40 some years as a human guinea pig. Elmer Allen told his best friend and his family doctor that he suspected that he had been used as a human guinea pig. However, neither man believed him, and his family doctor classified Elmer as a paranoid schizophrenic.